This group is shrouded in mystery and believe their origins date back to the First Crusades. Followers of this secret society will never discuss what happens behind closed doors, and it normally wouldn't be an issue if some of the members weren't extremely powerful and wealthy. It's difficult to ignore that over a dozen of our past presidents have been members of this group, from our founding fathers to the colonel himself. Here are people you won't believe are Freemasons. Hey guys, how's it going? I'm your host, American Eye, keeping an eye on everything you want to know. But first, we'd like to give a quick shout out to Aster Static, Dexters, and Crystal for being our first commenters on our Haunted Places in England video. Be sure to hit the bell for notifications, and maybe you'll have a chance to be featured. Number 13, George Washington. Are secret societies the base of the United States' beliefs and policies? Is our country just one giant experiment to see how Masonic rules would work out for governing our country? It's difficult to ignore that over a dozen of our past presidents have been members of this group called the Freemasons. It was fairly clear that our legendary founding father, George Washington, was a part of this secret society. It's believed that Knights Templars uncovered secret documents from the Ark of the Covenant in the 12th century AD from the Holy Land and then bringing them back home to England. The Masons guarded the secrets with these documents and they were passed down from generation to generation. Some claim that a family that held on to these documents was that of George Washington. Was that why he was elected to be our first president? Number 12. Benjamin Franklin Benjamin Franklin was certainly one of the brightest minds of all time and helped shape our revolution. But how do we really know who this guy was on the $100 bill? He was initiated into the Freemasons organization around the year of 1730 during the February meeting of St. John's Lodge in Philadelphia. He also printed the first Masonic book in the United States known as Anderson's Constitution. Anderson was a master of the Grand Warden at the Lodge of London and also in Westminster. You have to wonder if some Masonic ideas from their constitution made into the United States Constitution. Ben Franklin was also one of our greatest ambassadors and a favorite among the French. He met at various lodges over there and in London as well. When visiting a Freemason tavern in Ireland, it's believed that he began to attend meetings as a non-member of another society known as Hellfire Club. This club is kind of scary if you do your research. Number 11. Davy Crockett Although some of his most memorable moments come during the time of the Texas Revolution, the saga of Davy Crockett is like no other in history, but sources are telling us that he was a Freemason. There's even a Masonic Lodge named after him in Texas. Originally a colonel for a militia in Tennessee, he also served some roles in politics, which was likely when he was initiated into the Freemasons. Born in 1786, he was born during a time when the U.S. was trying to spread west and nothing could stand in our way. His skills as a soldier and explorer were evident in the Creek War, but he was also a skilled hunter claiming to shoot down 105 bears in one year. He became a celebrity, and during his role as a congressman, he was sketched doing outlandish things like writing on crocodiles, for example. During the Battle of the Alamo, he gained his most fame for taking the courageous stand against the Mexican army, but his attempts proved to be unsuccessful. It's still unclear whether or not he was captured or fought till the very end. His Masonic apron is still on display in western Tennessee if you need any more proof. Number 10. Andrew Johnson and John Wilkes Booth Ford's Theater is where Abraham Lincoln was shot in the back of the head by John Wilkes Booth on April 15, 1865. Could the Freemasons have been the ones behind the assassination so they could get their own to become president? The vice president at that time was Andrew Johnson, a known Freemason who'd become president if something bad happened to Lincoln. Many believe that the Civil War was a plan to divide the Union so British Freemasonry could take over the United States. According to some sources, John Wilkes Booth was a 33rd degree Freemason. He would also receive some heavy cash if he were to pull off this one. This photo here shows Andrew Johnson giving a Masonic pose with his hand in his jacket, which represents the hidden hand that controls the world. John Wilkes Booth also shows the same gesture that we saw earlier, but no photos of Abraham Lincoln are ever seen like that. This makes you wonder. The more you investigate the genealogy of John Wilkes Booth, you can also begin to really understand his close ties with Masonry and secret societies such as the Hellfire Club. Number 9. Jesse James Another American known for roaming the frontier, this outlaw might have got his violent tendencies during the Civil War. But after that, he decided to head out west and north for riches and fame. 
Or was he actually doing it as a plot to usher in the Second Civil War? He was known for robbing Union banks, train robberies, and being the leader of a criminal enterprise. He was also given orders by Albert Pike to steal as much money from the Union as possible so the South could rise once again. The people of the South kind of saw him as a Robin Hood type criminal that stole from the rich and helped out the people in the community. Some are skeptical about his generosity and think he was a no good dirty criminal. In any case, his goal was to disrupt the Union's finances as much as possible and simply wreak havoc. The second uprising never happened, but it certainly caused a lot of chaos. Number 8. The Inventor of Basketball James Naismith was an inventor of basketball and was also a member of the Freemasons. He wrote 13 rules to the sport to keep it simple, but that's also a number that's often associated with Freemasonry. In modern times, the number of rules has increased to 66 pages of rules. Divide that by 2 and you get 33, which is also a number often associated with the Freemasons. Being born in Canada, he was a physical education teacher who noted that it was hard for him and his students to get exercise outside during wintertime. He used two peach baskets, cut out the bottom, and suspended the bottomless basket 10 feet high on the side of a wall. This was kind of like that game that the ancient Aztecs used to play where the winning team had the honor of being sacrificed to the sun god. We'll see later on how famous basketball players will also adopt the life of a Freemason later on in this video. Number 7. Harry Houdini Freemasons often enjoy the concept of magic in other realms where spirits can exist. Harry Houdini's real name was actually Eric Weiss and he was from Jewish descent. This Hungarian-born illusionist was famous for his unbelievable escape acts. He could also bust through constraints like straitjackets and being able to hold his breath for a long period of time. He would also spend a lot of his time trying to debunk psychics and mediums. He would later on appear in films too. Harry Houdini eventually would join the Freemasons as a member of the St. Cecile Lodge 568 in New York City. Number 6. Winston Churchill The greatest British leader during the Second World War was Winston Churchill, but he was initiated into the Brotherhood well before that period of time in 1901. He first went to Stud Home Lodge number 1591, which still exists to this day, but now goes by the name of United Stud Home Alliance Lodge 1591. He never really progressed much through the order after being let in at a young age in his mid-twenties. He eventually resigned from his Mason Lodge, but kept his Freemasonry membership. He would continue to keep in contact with his brothers and wrote them several letters in support of establishing a new lodge. While Winston Churchill wasn't the most active of Freemasons, it still shows you how leaders of the Western world all seem to be aligned with this organization in one way or another. Number 5. General MacArthur General Douglas MacArthur was one of the more notable generals during the 20th century who served time in both global conflicts and even up until the Cold War. He was a member of an important lodge at West Point. His father was also a Freemason and he would go on to reach the highest attainable rank as a 33rd degree. He also became a member of the Manila Lodge, number 1936, and would achieve his status as a 33rd degree after the war in 1947. Due to his powerful status as a general, he'd also be able to join the Scottish Rite in 1937. Eventually, he'd be laid to rest in Norfolk, Virginia at the MacArthur Memorial in 1964. Some of MacArthur's power would be lost to another Freemason named Harry S. Truman, who ordered the atomic bomb blast that ended the conflict in the Pacific. Number 4. Buzz Aldrin Buzz Aldrin, the second man to walk on the moon, was certainly not the only Masonic astronaut to make it to space, but he was one of the more notable ones to do so. Were the Freemasons trying to claim the moon as their territory or something? Or were they the ones who profit off of all of NASA's lies? Who knows? But one thing is clear, Buzz was initiated as a part of the Masons at Oak Park Lodge No. 864 in Montgomery, Alabama on February 17, 1955. He then took on some roles at the Lawrence N. Greenleaf Lodge No. 169 in Denver, Colorado the next year. Eventually, he would join the York Rite in Waco, Texas. Some rumors actually say that he was given authority to open a representation of the Grand Lodge of Texas on the moon and establish a lodge there, whatever that means. Number 3. John Elway Many people have been to the Denver airport and claim to see some bizarre New World Order type symbols there. While Colorado seems to be home to some notable lodges, one of their favorite all-time athletes is a member of the South Denver Lodge. Is this where they go to rig football games and come up with new ways of controlling the sheeple? He played his entire 16-year career with the Denver Broncos. His initiation wouldn't come until after his football career was over. He's now the owner of the team that he once played for, which has given him a lot of money and power as a result. Some still feel as though the horse itself has some mean in secret societies. Number 2. Colonel Sanders Many of you out there might be a fan of Colonel Sanders and his finger-licking good chicken. It turns out that he was not only a leader of chicken, but also a leader among the Freemasons. 
he was able to achieve a 33rd degree as a Scottish Rite Mason. This businessman made a fortune from selling his quality product and remained as their spokesperson until he passed away. He was a member of the Hugh Harris Lodge in Corbin, Kentucky. He was also the mentor to Dave Thomas of Wendy's, who was also a part of the Freemasons. And before we get to our number one, we'd like to hear from you guys which Freemasons that we didn't mention on this list also surprised you. Do a little research for yourself and let us know in the comments section and maybe we'll feature you in an upcoming video. And number one, Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille O'Neal has joined the Brotherhood and now seems to have a dominant role as a television personality on TNT. Some have caught him mysteriously staring at the camera and have accused him of being a part of the MK Ultra project. Maybe the Shackbot need a reboot. He revealed his membership during a television airing where he showed his ring and he stated that it's a ring of his profession. The ring clearly showed the Freemason symbol. He admitted to being a Mason but doesn't go too into detail about it. He's also working as a DJ known as DJ Diesel. His initiation probably wasn't until after his career either. Brother O'Neill is reportedly a part of the Widow's Sun Lodge of Boston, Massachusetts. That's Celtic territory, Shaq. What are you doing? Whoa, now that was a cool video. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.